Hi everyone, my name is Max and today I'm going to show you all the components for my upcoming hydrofoil build video. In case you don't know what an hydrofoil is, it's like a surfboard with a wing underneath and a really powerful motor attached to that wing, so that it propels you through the water and then the wing generates lifts and lifts you up out of the water. So it's a little bit like flying and surfing at the same time. So this is the design that I came up with. This basically fits the size of my CNC exactly. So it's one meter 50 long or five foot and 50 centimeters wide. That's about three and a half foot. And what you see here is the mast that gets attached to these two rails on the underside. So the motor will be underwater and the cables go through the mast into the board through this hole here and come out the other side. And here they go into the ESC box, which is an aluminum housing for the motor controller. And here at the front there's this little bay that can house one of these waterproof camera cases for all the other electronics, batteries and so on. So the plan is to cut the shape of this board on my CNC and then to glass everything over with fiberglass. And these two holes on the underside will be drainage holes so the water that collects in the bay at the top for the electronics can drain down and out of the board again so I don't have this extra weight. And the same here, this ESC box will be partially submerged though for cooling and all the excess water can flow out of this hole and then drain towards the mast area. So here are all the components, um, or most of the electrical components that I already got for this. Main part is this waterproof box right here, and this is going to hold most of the electronics. So the batteries and the safety gear and the remote control stuff. And this little box right here is also waterproof and this is going to hold the uh, ESC for the electric motor, the controller. Because this is going to be a brushless motor with roughly 6000 watts, so it's going to be quite hot. And that's going to be a neat coolant, so I've got this box and it's going to be partially submerged in the water, so it's being cooled by the surrounding water. Yeah, these are the batteries. I've got four of them. These are 10 amp hour batteries and I've got four of them at 10 C. So 10 C times 10 amps gives you the maximum current, so 100 amps per battery. So I've got two of them, so that's 200 amps, which should be enough. I'm rating everything for about 200 amps, but I think I will only use 200 amps in peaks and usually about maybe 60 amps. So that's what I've got all these cables for. These are silicon cables, eight gauge. And that should be plenty strong. And I used silicone because it's uh, more heat resistant and uh, more flexible than a polymer so that's uh, really good quality stuff right here and I've got four meters unfortunately they package them in these one meter lengths which is a bit annoying so I have to add them together I've also got these connectors uh, which are yeah rated for well a lot of amps basically I don't know how much but that's a lot and these things these tubes are to connect wires so you just crimp them together easier than soldering and these are the bullet connectors I'm going to use I plan to use these XT90 connectors here from yeah, RC plane controllers basically, but they're not rated for enough current. I think these are rated for roughly 120 amps, but these are rated to much higher currents. These are XT150 connectors and they're just a bit beefier. So I'm going to use these mostly and maybe these ones if these are not enough. Yeah, and here we've got a little fuse. This is a 100 amp fuse right now. It's in these holders. I think they use them for like stereos. And uh, this is 100 amps at the moment. I need to order some 200 amps ones as well, but I think 100 amps is good. For testing at least and if this blows i don't know probably this housing blows not not so sure yeah so this all will be housed in this box and then we've got cables coming out and for the outcoming cables i've got these things these are rated uh ip68 so that's i think submergible in water in one meter for an hour or something like that so these should be waterproof and also smaller ones for smaller cables uh, i really hope they work because otherwise i might try some electronics and you know with these batteries there's a big fire risk, but I guess I will be safe since I'm in the water. Uh, I must make sure that these don't blow up on land. So while I've got them in the house, I store them in these um, fireproof bags. I don't really think they are, but better than nothing. And I store them outside in the pool house uh, where they can't cause any damage basically, if anything should go wrong, but they're still heated. So they're above freezing. So all of this is going to be controlled by this remote control. It's like in car C remote control, like, but I don't need this wheel, so I might as well take it off. Uh, this is just for now. And later on, I'm probably going to build something with an Arduino that's really waterproof and has some more gadgets in there, like safety things. Uh, so it will turn itself off if the voltage is too low, stuff like that. Yeah, and this is the little receiver that goes into the board and this gets the signal from the remote control and then I can control the motor. This is all RC plane stuff. I've got these thermometers. And I've got three of them, one for the battery housing, one for the ESC housing, and one for the motor itself. So I can check the temperatures, uh, make sure nothing is overheating. This is mainly for testing, I guess, later on. I probably don't need them. This is a little safety switch like you have on a jet ski. So if you fall, you pull this 
and this has to take off the power basically so the connection between the batteries and all the rest of the electronics uh, that's why i have a bit of a problem i don't really have a relay for that because relays are normally not rated for 200 amps i can't find anything that's rated for 200 amps and is reasonably cheap like for 200 dollars i can get one but it's a bit too much for my liking so i'm looking for a cheap alternative i might have to build a little relay from a solenoid or a friend of mine from hamburg he's um, building one with 30 mosfets in parallel got to see how this turns out and here we've got a little voltage meter and an amp meter and this amp meter reads the current not in series but in parallel so it does some kind of electronics magic to uh, read the amps without the amps actually going through here and this is rated to 200 amps <laughs> rated you know it's from china i uh, gotta test it if it works or not this thing right here is an sbec so this is like a power supply that changes the voltage from the batteries from 50 volts down to something usable for electronics like 5 volts or 12 volts yeah it's just a power supply basically but you're definitely gonna need this and then we've got these two little things you plug them into battery and they tell you the voltage of each cell these are really handy i think yeah it says six c's number one 3.7 volts cell two is 3.7 volts save cell three and so on so it shows you the voltage of each cell and they're really useful and i can keep them plugged in and they will warn me if the cell voltage goes below a certain point and then i know i have to stop writing and recharge it's just so I don't deep discharge these. And the board itself is going to be made from XPS foam. That's this stuff right here. Really lightweight. You get it in any hardware store. It's used for insulating houses. And it's cheap. I paid for all the foam, maybe $30. That's pretty cheap. And I'm going to use fiberglass to cover everything with. I was thinking about carbon fiber, but then carbon fiber is about 10 times as expensive. The, the value you get from carbon fiber is not that great, in my opinion. Uh, unless you're building an airplane or spaceship here i've got a copper paste it's going to be used to protect all the threads so if salt water reaches them i can still um, use them and so they come loose easily oh and i've got one more thing which is these bullet connectors here and these are like these but these are a little bit special they've got a resistor built in so while you plug them in in that moment normally there would go a spark in between here and that could cause problems with your electronics so uh, the little resistor inside connects first and that kind of discharges that spike and then you connect it straight away and everything is fine. So these cost a little bit extra, but it's going to protect my electronics, hopefully. Yeah, and what I really need is a safety switch out here that I can just press and it disconnects the batteries. But for that, I obviously need a really big relay, which I can't really get, at least not yet. So I already started cutting some of the shapes on the CNC and this is going to be quite an exciting project, I think. So stay tuned for that, subscribe to this channel and you can get all the updates of this uh, build series. And at this point, you're probably wondering what kind of motor I'm going to use and the wing, of course, as well. I already bought the wing. It's a Cabrinha double agent from 2016. I got a pretty good deal on that. So that's why I'm using this. The wing is maybe a little bit too short. Uh, I guess we have to test this uh, when spring comes. So I might have to build a bigger one, but that should be okay. So for the motor, Motor, I don't have one yet. I'm still waiting for this company that rumors say is bringing out a motor that is perfect for this application. So I'm waiting for that. And also for the ESC because that's going to be coupled to the motor. So I can't buy that yet. But in the meantime, I have to build a board anyway. So I still got a little bit of time left for when I need the motor. And if you want some more information on these hydrofalls, there's a really cool forum with good people from all around the world that share tips and tricks. It's called uh, efoil.builders. And there you get all the information and you can can ask questions or show what you've built you know uh, there are lots of people out there currently that are building these and this is kind of a new thing because i guess we didn't really have the technology a few years ago or at least not at the price you know the us did a lot of tests with hydrofalls in the 1960s i believe uh, for the military boats but they never really went anywhere um, commercially but now that anybody can buy these cheap batteries and motors in china uh, there should be a much more people building these so thanks for watching guys, stay tuned for all the updates on this build and also some other projects on my channel and see you next time. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff.